Hey guys, how's it going? Ghostly Rich here today. And we got the Volkland suspension. Let's see what comes in the box. Oh, it comes with a Christmas card. This is your instructions. This is not your instructions. This is a big piece of cardboard. Oh, adjustment hook. Holy smokeroonies. This is your Vogelin suspension. You can see, rear coil, they are purple. We'll leave this in here, all this put together, and like this. All right, so, we're gonna have to install it now. I've already got two separate things, as you can see, we have a steering rack here. The reason why is I actually have a blown steering rack in the GTI right now. So, that will be getting swapped out at the same time. Take the negative off the battery. Just loosen off your negative, and then all you're gonna do is wiggle that off, tuck it in here, done. So before you start this project, first thing we wanna do is measure. So we need some references. When we come here, you wanna measure, if you can, either the center of your uh, hub, or some people might wanna do the bottom of the hub, because who knows. But if you try for the center, which is best, we can see that we're at 14 and a half. Write that down. You're gonna to go to each tire and do that. That way we have that measurement for later when adjusting our coilover. So do exactly that to all four tires. Put D on one side, which is driver, P on the other, which is passenger, and put the DP up here. This is your fronts, these are your rears. So you can see, my both my fronts are 14 and a half, my rear here is 14, and this is 14.25. I'm gonna try and make it match these, and then later on, once we've broken in after a while, breaking in the coils, uh, coil over suspension, then we will actually set our actual heights to what you desire. So if you get your new rims or tires, it's just nice to actually break them in first, then do it, and then all of a sudden you're rubbing on one area, all this is happening. Kick a piece of wood under the back tire. Let's lift it. Just in case you're curious, hook pick tool in like that. As you can see, breaker bar with your 19 or three quarter. You're gonna go here, we're gonna get rid of the sway bar, so that way it's off our shock, and that'll allow for more drop. Next, for up here, which is the same bolt, so it's an M6, this is an M6 triple square. Again, I have them in both, uh, both styles, just because if you have the German cars, you need triple square. So you put your M6 in here, and then you just loosen it, so. You'll just go back, loosen, loosen to hold it if that starts spinning, which mine did. So again, holding here and then loosening. I have ratcheting ones, but the ratcheting one didn't fit. After you get your bolt out, you're just seriously gonna pop this and leave it. Just leave it over here. Go to the other side, do the exact same thing. Now you'll go underneath. Once we go underneath, let's understand what's going on down here. Right here is your sway bar mount on your subframe. We aren't going to have to touch that. These two right here are actually for your steering racks. Downpipe mount right here. You're just going to take a 14 and there's a bolt here and a bolt on that side. If we come into here, again, this is just under or by your brake pedal, you will see this piece of plastic right here. You can either A, try and use a flat blade, or use your man fingers. So if you take a look, what I've done is I've actually put a line with a Sharpie from here onto the spline so I can make the splines match up later. And that's just so, that's for myself. You can see right there on the spline, right, I'll poke it with the flashlight right there. And there's a black mark right there on the nub right here because I'm gonna try and match them up so that way our steering matches up right the same way. The next thing is you can also look at the grooves and go from there, but let's take out that 13 mil. So now you would just grab this, lift it off, and put it off to the side. Just leave this here. Also, after further inspection, you'll see that there's this round part that's right here. I'll show you on the other one. This round part that is right here and what this round part is, is where your bolt goes through, so that way it lines us up 
perfectly anyway when we put it back in. Once you slide this up and out, something important to note. Don't start turning this wheel, don't do any fun things like that until we go to line this up. The reason why is if you do start turning it all which ways and what's, you could screw up the clock spring and other fun things, as another mechanic has told me. So, next thing we're gonna do is, now that this is loose, we have everything loose, time to put the jack underneath and drop the subframe. Now that we're ready, put a 16 on your breaker bar, and what we're gonna do is uh, loosen off our dog bone mount. And what that's gonna allow us to do is if we crack that loose and keep it separated, which there's just those two bolts right there, might as well just go right off of there rather than touch the mount in the center. So when you're going around your subframe and you're looking, this bolt right here is gonna be loosened off. This bolt right here is gonna be loosened off. And that one. And same with the other side. So there's gonna be six in total. So if you want to, what you can do is go around to noticeable spots on your subframe and take a Sharpie like so, and you're gonna just line it up because we wanna make sure it lines up in the exact same. Some people just leave it because you'll be able to see where the dust or the dirt and stuff, it'll leave a line anyway, but we're just making a Sharpie line just in case so it leaves a little bit more. So it's an 18. We're just gonna break some of this tension off so that way we can Break some tension off. Again, breaker bar is the best invention ever for this stuff. With your jack in the center, just off of, from the dog bone, right here, just pump it up so it's resting there. And then what you're gonna do is that bolt right there and this bolt right here, you're gonna take out. And then leave the one that is up here, which once we have light, it will show you, but it's that one. That is, there it is. So that bolt right there, leave that for right now. We've got that one in by a couple threads and that's just a safety bolt. So that way if anything starts shifting weird or anything like that, it still has something to catch. Remember this bolt, which is that specialty looking bolt right here, came out of right there. And then same with the other, just for alignment issues and for when you go to screw this back in. Once you pop out those bolts, You'll notice that it is quite free. Once you have that bolt out of there, you'll be able to access the wiring harness bolt. Now again, if you look at that wiring harness that I had here, you'll notice that some of the tension is right here on this. So if you can get rid of that, it's gonna make your life a little bit easier when removing it. So all you do is that bolt is right there, right behind that mounting area and you should be able to get it with a 10 mil ratchet. We've now lowered the jack all the way. It's lowered out of the body. For removing our strut, you're going to want to have an 18 mil on your ratchet right here. And then on the other side, we're gonna have to have a triple square. Again, if you have a triple square kit, I believe it's possibly this 14 millimeter right here. Let's see, yeah, 14 millimeter triple square goes in right here. I suggest holding this one with either a ratchet or whatnot, unscrewing it, and uh, you could always hold this end with a box wrench. So if you have a ratchet here and a box wrench here. We're also gonna remove this brake stuff just in case. It's always good to have slack. All you have to do for this is literally press up and this one wiggles right out like that. Next one can be a little bit more tricky. This is an actual clip. So you just grab this, grab it, and you'll just pull it up. You might have to get your pick or your flat blade in there, like so. That comes out, and then it literally just goes. So you pull it out and then lift up, like so. And just work it out. Now, you've got a little bit more play right here. Again, if you want to leave a more play because you're worried, you can take it out of this bracket right here. I'm not going to do that for right now, but I'll have this right here. So, grab, this is a good example for that connector, just because it was a harder one to view. You'll see that there's a little barb right in there. So you're just trying to lift the little tab off. Now, if you have this, which is a ball joint separator, if you want, 
there is a, when you pull that bolt out, you can hammer that a little bit to separate the smiley face, which you'll, you can feel right in between here. Be careful when you're doing this, but just, you know, throw it in there a little bit and just a couple love taps like that, and then boom, it helps. And look at, whoop. Oh, let's see, see that one. Look at that. So when you separate it like that, if it doesn't go, don't be surprised. But what you can do is after you do that and you separate it, give it some love taps right here and this will drop. But that worked. Cool. So from this point, now we're going to go up top and get the top of the strut out. You still need to use this, even with the subframe down, and you just basically, you're flexing this down until you get this out. Next thing you need to do is that seal all the way over. There's also this piece of foam, but it's just somewhat like this. And next is the wiper arms. So we'll have to pick these covers off with picky. There we go. <laughs> they jump. 13, loosen them off. After you loosen these two bolts off, then they pull off and we can pull this plastic cover right out of here. So carefully when you're doing it, just go like this and then after you get one edge, you can literally just lift it all the way along and it literally is just sitting in this L edge here. You just have to get on the right angle. It's like half out and then you just pull up and it comes. It, just continue lifting and pulling out on that angle. If you take a look there, it's literally just a little ledge with a little mini barb. So like I said, just try to get that crazy angle and work it out and you're good. After that's out, we have full access to the three bolts at the top that look like they're 13s as well. Loosen those off. We're going to actually be compressing this spring so that way we can loosen this mount off. If you want to play craziness, and I mean play with craziness, some people I've seen have used ratchet straps to ratchet the coil so it doesn't try and move and then unbolt this center bolt. This is up to you. Literally, these are stupid cheap. They're still sort of dangerous to use, but at least they're a bit safer and not as crazy as that. I like to put my spring compressors on opposite ways like so. You don't have to do this. All you're going to do is tighten down, then tighten down. And you don't have to like start like compressing the spring too much because all we're doing is holding it in its current position. So just tighten that down, tighten that down so it's just maybe a little bit tighter than this. And then from there we're going to unbolt the center bolt. I am the vice grip. <laughs> so when this was on here, we did it so quick I thought I was going to be able to loosen it first and then show you, but how that nut was on in here, all we literally did is a tree hold this side and then you can either use ratchet or breaker bar. We just quickly use the impact because then it does it in two seconds. And if you really want it to be really dangerous, you could just impact and watch your cup try and shoot. But uh, again, we're going to go with use some spring compressors. Afterwards, get someone to hold the mount and after the mount, then when the stat shaft starts to spin, you can get someone to just hold on to the shaft if they have gorilla hands like me and Tariq. When releasing spring, if you've never done so before, you literally loosen this one, say six or seven turns, this one six or seven turns, and you keep on rotating until it's done. So if you're reinstalling stock shocks, which who really does that with a VW? I'm kidding. Anyways, you would recompress the spring to go on here. But if you're using coilovers like us, all we're going to do is screw the perch down to the bottom and then screw on our new mount. So this here is the silicone spray, waterproof parts, meaning what we want to do is waterproof these coats. Get sticky, which is good. 
but what it does is it repels the water so it doesn't stay here and does not corrode your threads. So later on in life, let's say during the winter you like to raise your car and then during the summer you like to lower your car. If you don't put this on there, when you go to adjust it between the seasons, it's going to be a nightmare if you don't have it on there because it'll start to rust the threads and then you'll be on a vise trying to crank them down or just buying new struts. So take your perch here, lower it all the way down to the bottom and then you're just going to shake this up nicely and we're going to spray this on the threads. Pretty easy, just literally spray, rotate and spray. After you spray it, thread it all the way down and leave it a couple threads up. After you do that, grab that purple stuff right there, we're going to slide that on and then we're going to uh, attach a new mounting bolt. Make sure you use the new mounting bolt if it comes with one. So this little rubber pretty much spacer right here, what you're going to do is take it, seat it in here, as you can see I already have it here, and squeeze it in. Once you squeeze it in, now you can just put this on here, line this up, which I will do after, and then thread new nut on the end and it's nylock so you just have to hold on to the shaft again and tighten that up that's now down all the way literally what we ended up doing and again if you're doing this with a breaker bar or a ratchet it could take longer because it is a nylock what you do is you get your best friend to hold on to that center shaft right there as you tighten and that's basically it you're holding right there or right here at first you could hold on to the mount at first and that'll do enough for the nylock when you start getting down to that bottom you would have to get someone to hold here the only other way of doing it is getting almost like a spark plug socket which goes on here and you would clamp onto the socket and then twist the center or hold the center and then you tighten the socket it look right here at the two arrows when you go to mount this in the two arrows need to be like this in there so if we were to lift it in right now you'll see that nub that nub if I were to put this down for a second should be aiming towards this fender well like this the arrows should be lined up with the two screws right here when you're looking at your shock mount all three bolts tight and done up there all you're gonna do is you turn the piston body so that way or the shock body here before you put your shock body back in there what you'll want to do is put some never seize or you can put some of that silicone on there but you're just gonna put some in there so that way if you ever have to pull that out for any reason once you've coated it like so you can if you have that secondary person again they can line this up while one person lifts the knuckle and you're just gonna get it in there the thing you don't want is a bottle jack or if you have a scissor jack what you're gonna do is Line up that screw right in the center of your jack. There's three. One, two, three. As long as you get one of those screws through there so that way it holds right in the center. Scissor jacks, we call them suicide jacks. But if you get a screw at least in the center of it, it's way more safe. Kind of. And then once you do that, you're just going to continuously keep turning this and it's going to raise it. And again, why are we raising it right here? Well, that way, this slides in with minimal amount of effort. So if it gets too tight to turn by hand, grab your handle and then tighten it or a screwdriver. So you're gonna start tightening your scissor jack. Once you start tightening it, if you notice that this stops going up, what you can do is actually take a hammer, knock it on the side right here, and as you knock it on the side, it'll sink in. You'll probably notice as you hit it pretty good, it'll start to slide down. And then just keep tightening your bottle jack and it'll slide up. You'd think it might have to go up to here, just looking at this and the other one, but it actually doesn't. You put it up, tight, we have our bottle scissor jack tightened up pretty far, and if we go underneath, you'll see that shininess, that it's just past the bolt, like it's past the bolt and it's to pretty much halfway down this flange. At this point, it's time to just put the bolt in and then it'll compress the bottom of the shock body here. Next, slide that bolt through, put the nut back on the other end and just crank her down. So, if you take the hose, put it through, put it there, put in your speed clip. Then, you're gonna take your secondary wire harness, which is right here, 
And we're gonna squeeze that back through and plug these two in. And again, there's nothing special with this one. You just squeeze it back in and plug both the sensors back in. So from this point, once you've tightened that up, put this end back together, just leave the sway bar mount to last because that's gonna be part of when we put the subframe back up. Now you're gonna go to the other side and we're gonna start this whole process over again. So go repeat this to the other side. Just one really quick note for you. Passenger side is easier. Now you might be like, why? Well, your drive shaft is longer on your passenger side. So since it is, technically, when uh, you do your trick, or you, if you have one of those picks and you hammer it into there, I'm telling you, it makes it so much easier. You just hammer it in between separating it, and then you hit it on the side or down, it just slides right off. And then it just sits right here, right there, the shock mount to the collar at seven. How do you adjust it? You take your little wrench and you start moving it and you'll watch it move up. Again, it just hooks on the tooth and you spin it. Hook on the tooth, spin it. Very easy. That's the only reason why I'm not showing you right now. Um, whatever you do, don't tighten that set screw whatsoever once it's here. Just leave it here because we're going to actually have to put the rim on, drop the car, see where it's sitting, and then you're, that we're just going to have to correct it. Reason why we're telling you to adjust this now is so you don't have to turn, take the rim off every time. You could if you wanted to. It just also gives you a same kind of balance point to work with. When you go to put your cowl on, just get this in here. Make sure that you still have your foam in here. Once this is in, that's on. Now you come up here and you press it along here into the windshield and then you have to get it to sit along that ridge. So as you press like this, it'll sink in and you'll see that it sinks in. Just make sure that, I, see how this sits flush? That's what it should sit like when you're uh, resetting that little barb in there. You don't want it lifted like that. After that, just separate the lips and press this all the way along, all the way along the inner ridge here. After you get that all set in there, now let's just put our wipers on. Line up your wipers like so. Make sure none of it touches the plastic and you are set. Best thing to do is have two people for this. Again, I had Tariq jacking it up. I was lining it up down here. After I was lining it up down here, he walked around and made sure that we went in on the right angle to get the steering prop through the top so we can slide that on later so that way it doesn't start grinding against the body. Now that this is lined up pretty close, it's time to put our bolts in. Now remember we had our separate bolts. I'll show you which one goes where. This is where you definitely want to have some never sees because this is a lot of how you do your uh, adjustments for your alignment. So once you never sees the threads, I haven't yet because I'm just showing you. Remember, this is your specialty one. It goes in this hole and then in the far hole is this bolt right here. Remember, never sees. Once you've shifted with your hands, because you'll have to move the subframe around, obviously, once you shift it around, get this one hand tight, this one hand tight, get that one done, and then go to the other side, do the exact same thing, and again, just leave them loose until you have all of them in. Once you have them all in, then you can line up your subframe. Now, before you cinch these up, make sure that 10 mils in on the wiring harness. Make sure, if you want to, your steering rack is, again, protruding through the top. And then also make sure all these bolts are tightened up. After we've done that, now we can focus on the last three and we're gonna cinch these up, but you don't wanna crank them yet. Just cinch them right up so the subframe is resting on the metal and then we're gonna line up all our marks that we made so that way our subframe is as close as we can to it. Again, after doing suspension, it is always good, always good to go and get an alignment done. Once everything's set and ready to go, as you can see, we're just under and you've lined it up exactly where it is. We've cinched it down now uh, exactly where we had made our marks. Again, use the same person's eyes that made the marks. So if your friend or someone did it, that's why Tariq, he made the marks. I said, hey man, I want you back down here because he knows exactly how it looked relatively to the marks. When you're cranking down the subframe, this is definitely one of those things where you are going hard. You don't want that to at all move loosen anything that is holding up a lot of steering components so don't be afraid this might be the 
Would we dare say it's a good time to He-Man? Yes. <laughs> He-Man. Next thing, take your 13s, what those were? Pop the jack out. And the subframe is completely bolted in there. You might as well put the dog mount in. It should line up. As long as you line that up the exact way, dog mount just goes right back in. At this point, you can, of course, slide the sway bar arms in if you couldn't before on both sides. Also, make sure you never seize these threads because I can tell you this, if you ever have to pull that off again, you're gonna cry if you never, never seized it. At this point, double check, everything is tightened up in here. For me, it is, I've checked everything. Everything's sort of where it should be. Time to bolt the rims back on. As it's going down, watch your gap. Do not just drop. Oh, look at that. We're actually really high. Well, let's go drop the other side. Wow. So. The seven inches has actually left a lot. We're gonna have to do some wheel play now. You can see the Sharpie. You can see the Sharpie. So now it's time to line the two Sharpie marks up. Again, we might have to move the steering wheel a little bit to make it happen. And you don't really have to worry because that little, the bolt that we have, that black bolt, won't go in unless you have it on the exact tooth it was on before. Oh, well, you know you did it right. If this is straight, so if you go straight right here, this is straight, and your wheel is straight, go and give yourself a cookie. For this plastic mount, just put it back on here, sink this in here, and you don't even have to screw it in. You can literally sink it in with your finger. And then you can, yeah, a little bit. And then that side too, just make sure it sits in there. We're gonna start our car. Things to note. You might get an ECS light or something like that, and that's just because you disconnected your battery. It warns you, that should go away after like a couple kilometers. But let's see. There you go, brake caliper. It's letting me know that it's gotta measure the brakes because it'll say that it's low because we disconnected a brake sensor when we put them back in. So you're going to go all the way this way, all the way that way. Oh, feels so much nicer. I had to do my steering rack if this video is different than the other one. So the steering rack was gone on it. So I did that at the same time when I dropped the subframe. That feels good. Let's take a look if our tires have dropped at all. No, we're still good. How did it look to you, Tariq? Any clearance look good? Backer-wise, yeah. Perfect. Measuring from our center hub, from what we went against before, we have an inch and a quarter drop. That's all I wanted. I didn't want to slam it. I didn't want to do anything like that. If you want to slam, go right ahead. You're ready to do so. From the seven inch, I think it's a great start. Now again, these are uh, 18 inch rims, but I have a lot of rubber on there. So depending on the size of your tires, everything, there's different variables. So it gives you at least somewhere to go from. Once you have your jack stand, just like you're used to over there, now we're going to come over to here. Rim's already off because I already showed you how to do that with the front. Line your jack up with the spring cup. We're gonna lift up the spring cup by jacking this up and it's gonna hold the spring and then we're gonna unbolt our shock. Take a look right here, T20 Torx. You're gonna go to all the screws on this carpet on the inside. There's like one, two, and there's some over here. You're gonna probably have grass and other fun things. You're gonna loosen them off so we can get the carpet out of here to get at the bolts. So if you grab right here, lift it out, just comes out like that. <sighs> Yay, fluffy bunnies. And you're just gonna literally work this out all the way around 
so that way you can get it. Oh, I forgot one screw. There's one down here, just so you know. After you get that, should be good. For right here, this should probably be either uh, 21. And those one's off with a 16, and that will loosen this mount. From this point, grab this out after you loosen all those bolts out. Now, after we've gotten to this point, we'll get this out of the way so you can see, you have your coil. There's multiple ways of doing this, but the easiest way is to slowly lower your jack. Again, don't turn that handle or the release too quickly. After you start to lower it, this will go down slowly, and then this will just be sitting in here. As long as you don't go Captain Ahab, you'll be fine. Go in from right here. This is the end link we're going to release. So that way we can get that coil. Just hold it with a wrench like this, and then if you have your triple square 16 mil, just loosen it out. When you're getting it out, it's not going to be fun, it's not going to be pretty. You have to go in from behind, which, light, there's such a catch-22 with lights and cameras. So, you can see that it goes in from the back right there. So you slip in the ball joint separator, and you just separate it just like we did with the front mounts and it pulls it out from the hole and just put it off to the side. Take your pry bar, put it in between the sway, grab this and pull it out like that. Rubber bushing right there that's sitting up on top of here, it might still be stuck up there, make sure you pull that out. You don't use it. Put these, separate them, and again, silicone spray all the way around just like you did with the front threads. That way you're protected against corrosion. And then now this is the shock. Boom, pop that off the top. There's the center bolt. What, it, what they've designed once again is for you to put something on here and then hold it right here. We are just gonna do the no-no and impact it off. And again, if you're impacting with an impact, small props. Don't just hold it, because if you just hold it, that's when you create heat and it causes problems. Want to see how you know if your rear shock's dead? And return. This, stock mount, and then, new nut. And it'll say nylock, and it'll be nylock and pretty. Then we'll put that on. And now, it's time for Tariq to get his shaft game on, and for me to brop brop. Since this one does not have that little flapper on the end, it's pretty much just like one thread above flush for when it's tight. We brop bropped it on in like two seconds. We've preset this to three quarters of an inch, and now that's gonna go up top, and then it's gonna go with spring, like so, and we're gonna go set it. Flat surface, like this, and now, Pry bar and put in. Actually, you might not even need pry bar, just push down. Smaller spring. As you can see, don't forget the cap. Make sure it clicks back on if you want to keep your threads even more protected, even with the never seize. Never seize them and then slip them back in. Pretty easy, you can't mess this up. Up like that, put the big bolt in the bottom, two small ones up top. Snug up the two top ones, don't quite crank them down yet. Then for down here, look how close that is. All you're gonna do is get someone to put pressure on the jack like so until the bolt lines up. Right there. Now, never seize the bolt and put it in. From this point, double check. Your bolts are all tight. Now it's time to slowly lower it and then watch your sway bar link. You might have to use your ball joint separator just to push it away from the arm as it comes down. So if you hook a ratchet strap all the way up to the other side, put one on the end link right here. This is your sway bar end link and you ratchet it. it. Then you don't even have to move the jack or do anything sketch. You just have to ratchet that. It'll bend it back. Line up the shaft of it with the hole right here. And after you, you line it up, you just crack that tension and it'll go into the hole. We just thought about it. We should have told you do it with a wrench, not with your hand. That's what you're going to do it with. When you do it with a wrench, that way when it releases, because it's going to sound like a gunshot when you release it, because it's going to go into the hole, and then you just have to love tap it back in. If your fingers are there, it's going to hurt. Never seize, put the bolt on. I didn't even need to put the triple square six mil in there afterwards. 
Uh, after that, you can either A, lower the car from the jack, which, yeah, you might as well see how it sits. And then after that, put the piece of carpet back in. Go to the other side, repeat. If you're wondering why you anti-seize, because of the fact that we just had that bolt on here, we actually had to pull out our spring first. And what we ended up doing is using that silicone spray. And then what I had Tariq flex down with the bar and then we pushed it out through the back. So we didn't even pull out the sway bar end length this time, just because the other side was already so high from the difference. We had to end up using a ratchet and a hammer because literally nothing would get in here and loosen that. And just by a miracle, it let go. And if you do in the socket, the perfect socket we found was a 1316. At this point, now that we've bolted the tires back on, it's time to lower the vehicle and just check our heights. We ended up, like I said, leaving three quarter on both sides. We double checked. After we do this, we'll know that they're good. The other thing is, is if you put that set screw in, nothing than like a pound, it's less than a pound of torque. If you read your instructions, it's 0 0.2 pounds and it's like one Newton meter or something. It's so little. So don't crank it, don't do anything. Just literally, just tighten it in with that little Allen key and leave it. It's just gotta kiss the freaking metal. Oh my gosh. It's a good thing we didn't crank down that rear. <laughs> no, we ended up leaving the rear and that's it. That's the rear with uh, three quarters of an inch. No adjustments. So if you're doing this and you want it this exact look, which you should run it in at the beginning anyway. Oh, car sounds good and looks good. So happy right now. You guys want to see something else cool? Yeah, if you want to see the lighting and how I did that, you can go on my channel. I've literally got everything I've done. KO4 turbo, everything from engine back. And the tail lights. Gosh, that looks good. All right. Thanks again for watching. Press like if you like the video and subscribe for more.